But if we're going to be serious students of the Bible, we need to look up some of these words from time to time in a Bible dictionary called a concordance. But we're not going to have any clue what we're reading. No clue whatsoever. Commentaries help too. I heard something. Who said? The commentaries help me too. Okay. Over here. Thank you. We use we use the term keep the commandments. And, and in the original Hebrew, there's no such thing as commandments, it's the instructions. And that's something that's been been brought over. You know, we can't we can't keep the commandments, but we can take the instructions. And how we take the instructions is a result of how we live. Thank you. And if you think of cherishing the commandments, they're not a burden. We do it because we love. I don't know if you realize that you just quoted 1 John 5, 3, I think, 4. His commandments are not a burden. Is that good news? Yes. So who's the focus on? Terrific me? No. Or terrific Jesus? Jesus. That is it. We believe that this is inspired. Amen. Question back here. When we're truly converted, he writes his commandments on our heart. They become second nature. Beautiful. Did everyone hear that? And you see as a protection, not as a burden. And what? A protection and not as a burden. Yes. You want to feel protected as a Christian. Who would like to look up Zechariah 2.5? Zechariah 2.5. I learned this memory verse when I was not even 10 years old. And I learned it for Old Covenant reasons. There was a reward. <laughs> Zechariah 2 5. Everybody there? For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Isn't that beautiful? What a picture! <coughs> you, you used the word Old Covenant. In the Greek, it's kindness. Is that right? Renewed Covenant. The word covenant in the Hebrew and in the New Testament is really speaking of a will. What's the translation? Renewed covenant. Renewed. I know Mrs. White uses that term because Rick had showed me that just a few minutes ago. But okay. you got to understand where she comes from. Okay. Do you understand that our brothers and sisters in the evangelical churches that go to church tomorrow, they teach that the Old Covenant, that Jesus or God saves people differently in the New Testament than He does in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, we're saved, they teach, by commandment keeping. That's up to the cross, up to Jesus. From Jesus on, we're saved New Covenant, which is what? By grace. Same thing. Is that biblical? No. No. That Jesus saves us differently in the Old Testament than he does in the New Testament. No. No. The term that they use in time period is dispensation. The dispensation of the Old Testament and the dispensation of the New Testament. In my opinion, it needs to be defined because it's problematic, particularly if you don't have Adventists in here that understand one from the other. Because there's a definition there with the law, and then the Sabbath comes into a question. I, I have a sermon that I preach on the Sabbath. And nowhere in that sermon do I use an Old Testament scripture. Why? Because we have, we have a very bad reputation in the Christian world. We hammer people over the head with the Ten Commandments. And these people have been taught that the Ten Commandments were done away with at the cross. Are they correct? No, but that's what they believe. 
So how do you communicate, which is what I think he's asking. They don't have a problem with them until you get the fourth commandment. Okay. So how do we communicate with people like that? New Testament. New Testament. New Testament. Did the disciples keep the Sabbath after Jesus was resurrected? Yes. Wow. Look at the book of Acts. Yes. Go to the book of Hebrews. Book of Hebrews. So, when we come up with these situations, we need to be sensitive to what other people believe. Amen. Uh, if we don't, we're not going to be communicating very, very effectively with these people. The loyalty and love, the three things you named at the beginning, that could be a problem. So, that brings us back to the Sabbath, which is the word R-E-S-T. Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm going to read to you because I'm going to jump around. Time is running away from me. Hebrews chapter 2. When you're there, say ready. Ready. And let's go down to... Uh, I apologize. Hebrews chapter 3. <clears throat> I'm going to read verses 18 and 19, the last two verses of chapter 3 of Hebrews. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? That's the opposite of faith. And so we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. Therefore, let us fear, lest while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you should seem to have come short of it. What is that talking about? Look at verse 6, Hebrews 4 now. Hebrews 4, verse 6. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, it being rest, and those who formerly had good news preached to them failed to enter because of disobedience. There is, there is again, disobedience. Verse 8, Hebrews 4. For if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. Here it is. Verse 9, there remains therefore a Sabbath, there it is, right? I mean, they translated correctly for the first time. Some versions include Sabbath before that. There remains therefore a Sabbath rest for who? The people of God. Isn't that what we're trying to learn here? How to meet the needs of other people? Amen. What would be an irrefutable way of communicating our peace with God, our strength with God, and the glory of God being reproduced, reproduced in us better than resting in Jesus' perfect creation. Why did Jesus rest on the Sabbath after the crucifixion? Because the redemption was perfect as well. Perfect redemption. A perfect and complete redemption. <laughs> Why will we celebrate Sabbath in heaven? Isaiah 66. To celebrate a perfect and complete restoration. The ultimate, the ultimate demonstration of righteousness by faith is a people that are coming today, yes, on the coming to church, yes, on the right day of the week, but for the right motivation. Amen. We're resting in what? A perfect and complete creation, a perfect and complete redemption, redemption and in the anticipation of a perfect and complete restoration. restoration. All right. We touched a little bit in Acts uh, in uh, Mark 16, verse 17, that faith always accompanies or initiates healing. To your knowledge, has Jesus, when he was here, ever grabbed someone that needed healing and said, I'm healing you whether you like it or not? Let's take a look at uh, one of our scriptures this week. 
which is Mark 5, Mark 5, and I need a volunteer to read verse 23 and 25. Mark 5, 23. Volunteer? Okay, right here. Oh. 24, 25. 23. 23, okay. And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? Uh, is that Mark chapter 5? That's 4. I'm sorry. Sorry? <laughs> Mark chapter 5, verse 23. Besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the mount of death, at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, and she that she may be healed, and she shall live. <coughs> what is this synagogue official demonstrating right here? Faith. Faith. Faith, Faith always precedes a healing. But not necessarily the person that's being healed. Well, did he have faith or not? I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about... No, no, no. I'm talking about this that we just... The man had faith, yes. But you don't have to... People don't have to have faith to have healing. The, there's people that ask for the healing have faith. That's what I'm saying. The Roman centurion, for one example, in regard to his servant, the Roman centurion had faith but the person being healed doesn't necessarily have to be the one that has the faith. Well, the centurion was an intermediator right. for the servant. The servant right. maybe did not hear, had heard about Jesus, but the centurion had. Right. So faith must precede what? Healing. I understand what you're saying, that the recipient has not right. necessarily expressed right. faith. I understand that. Thank you. Okay, verse 25 of Mark 5. Mark 5, verse 25. Anyone would like to volunteer to read that? Bob, sure. thank you. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. In verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the, came in the press behind and touched his garment. What is that an expression of? Faith. Faith. 100%. Okay? How about verse 35? Okay. Uh, the synagogue official's daughter is now dead. Jesus has, you know, finally arrived there, and people come out and say, don't bother him, you know, she's dead. Verse 35. Okay? Well, he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Wow. So the daughter, it's his daughter, I say, has made you well. But the whole family had faith that they wouldn't have sent for it. That's right. You like that? See, and that's what people need to see in us. That's how we can meet the needs of other people. When they see that we're living our lives by what? Faith. We are Jesus' commercial on this earth. And when he reproduces his character in us, we become irresistible to a world that's all messed up up here. Then people are going to say, what? Where did you develop this peace? Well, you need to come to church on Saturday and be baptized. Is that the response? No. Wherever it is that they're at in understanding or interest, we study with them. And as the Holy Spirit prepares them, then we introduce them to the significance of baptism. Mark uh, chapter 10. Who would like to read verse 46? Uh, verse 47. Mark chapter 10. Wow. When do I have to stop? When does the siren go off? Whenever you're done. 
No. <laughs> I don't want to mess up the new service. But it's important that we understand that faith precedes healing here. Okay? Who would like to volunteer to read uh, Mark 10, verse 47? I saw a hand. Okay. Oh, yeah. do, do you think that you see uh, as much asking for healing in the Adventist church in the more modern day in the last few years as you did 30, 40 years ago? I don't know. You have verse 47? And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. What did that mean? Jesus, son of David. What does that mean? Well, he was the promised Messiah. Huh? He was the promised Messiah. They recognized his acknowledging. Yes. And so he's expressing what? What does Jesus do? Does Jesus walk over to the guy? What does Jesus do? Stand still. So what is it that you want? Restore my sight. Then what does he do? Come over here. What? The guy's blind. Come over here, Ryan. Is that an act of faith or not? Yes. yes. And what did he do? Well, let me get up. Now he jumped out. Faith. <coughs> he could hardly wait. Oh, but we learn to have the faith of Jesus. Wow. That's one of the three major topics under present truth. The faith of of Jesus. What does he say to him in verse 52? Mark 10. What does Jesus say to the blind man in verse 52? Go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. The focus is not on Jesus, is it? It's on the faith. recipient's faith. Uh... John chapter 5. Who would like to read verses 5 through 8? John chapter 5. We're on Monday. John chapter 5, verses 5 through 9. Really. John chapter 5, verses 5 through 9. Volunteer? Okay. A man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, do you wish to get well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your pallet, and walk. Immediately the man became well and picked up his pallet and began to walk. Thank you. Do you think there's a chance, since he was a crippled, paralytic for 38 years. Do you think that there's a chance in that period of time that he was a paralytic and he was lying there at the pool that someone said to him, why don't you get up and move a little closer? Do you think there's a chance that someone suggested that? 38 years? What was his answer to Jesus? I have no man to put me into the pool. What did Jesus say? <laughs> Get up! Take up your pallet and move! And what did he do? Well, but who's going to help me? Who's going to help me get up? Is that what he said? Is that what the rapper said? No. An act of faith. So there was a connection there between the man's hope, 30 years, 38 years of being paralyzed, and listening to the confidence, the trust that was coming through through Jesus' voice. Isn't that amazing? Amen. And that is what people need to see in us. Do we have a live connection with Christ? In order to what? Meet the needs of other people. The Holy Spirit will prepare us. But He has to have something to work with. And that is what? My focus. Where is my focus? What is my business? 
My business is witnessing. So I, how, how quickly am I going to heal if I'm, if I'm sick? If I'm focused on Jesus' business, which is my business. Real quick. Wow. Okay. I'm going to have to skip. No, you don't. Keep going. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Thursday, Luke uh, chapter 14, verse 26. Very, very strong statement here. Very, very strong statement. Some people do not understand this. Luke 14, maybe I better read this, because... What verse? What verse? Verse uh, 26. Who would like to read that? Let me read it because we're running out of time. Luke 14, 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. That's pretty strong, isn't it? Yes. What is Jesus trying to communicate here? Be first. first. Say that a little louder, please. That they have to be willing to put Jesus first. Is he talking about hating your mother, father, children? Of course no. not. But he's talking about priorities. What is my number one priority? That's the issue. And then all of these needs being met that we come across every day, Jesus will say, I got a job for you. You're the owner of the business. You're my partner in business. In what? Proclaiming the gospel. But giving evidence that this thing called the gospel works. And if I'm not experiencing it, how credible am I going to be? That's what this is all about. In Matthew 16, 24 and 25, it says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Luke says the same thing in uh, Luke 9, 23. What is the cross that Jesus is asking us to take up? What is the cross? What does Jesus say to me in Revelation 3.21? Chuck, I want for you to overcome the way that I overcame. Die to self. Say that a little louder, what? Die to self. That's it. And the ultimate visual demonstration of dying to self is the cross. Well, what is it that Jesus wants for me to overcome? Jesus, who would like to turn to John, uh, John 16.33? Last verse in John chapter 16. So, I heard someone say something. Self, S E L F. What is what? Who would like to read John six twenty three? Uh, Thirty three. Real quick, quick, quick. These things okay. I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Well, some people say that's kind of vague. World. What does the world mean? Let me read it to you. In closing, 1 John 2.16. I'll wait a real, real short period of time so you can follow, but real, real short. 1 John 2.16. 1 John 2.16. You ready? 1 John 2.16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And that's what Jesus overcame. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 
And that's what he's asking me to overcome. Self. Just what I said. Self. Pride. That's what it is. Self. What is pride? A terminal disease that Satan introduces in heaven. Mm. And that is our challenge. So, back here, Henry. I was going to say it could be all rolled up into one sin. Well, sin is a result. But before I can sin, I have to have what? Unbelief and <clears throat> motivated by pride. Good point. But we have to go to the origin of the cancer. We have to find out how it got started. And when we eradicate it, now we have a solution. The beauty of this is that Jesus is asking us to meet the needs of other people. But he's asking us to do it the way he did it. Do you like that? Yes. That's the issue. And when God has a people on this earth that are focused on crucifying self, how long will it take for the work to be finished? Would you like to take the for service and finish this Sabbath school class? No. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? <laughs> Would you? <laughs> well, why don't you ask the class? Would y'all like for Chuck to come back for Vespers to finish the Sabbath Amen. school class? Sure. Sure. Amen. Amen. Some people are being very tactful and not, not, they're not moving. <laughs> they're, not, they're, they're not moving their hands or their mouth or anything. Well, if, if, if you would like to continue this this idea Amen. of meeting people's needs, I'll be glad to share it. Amen. But, uh, the key is not the job, meeting people's needs. The key is how did Jesus meet people's needs? By appealing to what? The psyche. To appeal to people's what? Trust and love and loyalty. And that's what brings about conviction. Most Christians are Christians because they prefer to go to heaven than to burn in hell. But it's a... The motivation is fear of punishment or hope of reward. That is not acceptable to God. That's level one. What? That's level one. So... So, <clears throat> Jesus is trying to appeal to our... Sorry. That's what the word soul would be. Uh, I haven't heard the siren the second time, so, but I see people coming in. So let's close with prayer. <clears throat> Loving Father, we thank you for answering our request to meet with us and open our minds and our hearts to the significance of how you went about meeting the needs of people when you were on this earth. And telling us clearly that you of yourself can do nothing. Help us to recognize that you want for us to meet the needs of others exactly the way that you did. So that we will be totally focused on you, where you're at, and what you're doing. Thank you for answering these requests. We ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you come for best friends, bring your Bibles, okay? That's okay. Um.